Hey guys, it's Sam and today I'm going to be talking about and walking you through the Oak Ash and Thorn Tarot. This was a tarot deck that was created by Stephanie Burroughs and illustrated by Adam O'Leary. In my edition, I did get a certificate of authenticity because these were a limited print, although I do think they came out with a second printing that's now available or at least for pre-order. This was one of the first tarot decks that I discovered when I first was getting into tarot and I pre-ordered it and it was one of my most recent ones that I received. So it did take me some time to get this because I pre-ordered it before it was even made. This first edition that I got came with this embossed label on the box, which is just stunning. I mean, I don't know if you can tell in person, but this is from Three Trees Tarot because Stephanie is going to be making more tarot decks and has a whole description on the back as well. This is a tarot deck with roots in the enchanting natural world, and that's one of the reasons that I got this. This is a Rider Waite inspired tarot deck, and they did use some sustainable printing. So let's get into this deck. Hey guys, Editing Sam here. I forgot to mention this is my Bibliothecary uh, video pick for the month. So every month my supporters over in the Bibliothecary community get to pick a video topic that I'll do on this channel or my other channel, and this is what won because I've been talking nonstop probably about this tarot deck. So if you want to be a part of that and contribute to my content in that way along with a lot of other perks that we have over there I will link that on the screen. Now one thing I'll say is I do love this box but I do think getting in and out of this box is a bit of a pain in the butt. I'm always afraid I'm going to rip the box. Now here is what the back of the cards look like. This is that nature print and the four suits are the rabbits, the foxes, the crows, and the squirrels and those are all included there in that middle part and I just I love this. The cardstock on these is fairly stable and sturdy. Ooh, a little spoiler there for this card. And I haven't yet used these because I want to do the walkthrough first, but they do feel like they're going to be fairly easy to shuffle. And it does have kind of, not a super glossy finish, I would say like a satin. This is actually a special card, so I will be talking about this later. And I do want to point out just how caring this company is and the customer service and care they put into things. So this was one of the cards that was included, a little thank you, they included a handwritten letter, they have information about Three Trees Tarot. The way I discovered them was actually on their Instagram, so I definitely recommend you check it out there. And that is just a little sample of some of the art. They also included these two references reference cards, which I actually really like and prefer to having the book, because the little books that you get in every deck, is, it just adds up. It's a lot. So this is the Major Arcana card, and they have things on the back as well for the Major Arcana. It just goes through all of them and includes just a few simple keywords, but they also recommend that you can intuitively read this, and this is based on the Rider Waite system, so really any guidebook you have, you can use with this. And then we have the same thing for all of the suits. So I did really enjoy this because it just takes up way less space. And now we will go through the cards. Now I'm not going to go through the descriptions of every single card. I've done that in previous videos. I will go into it for some of them, like some of my favorite cards and things like that, or things that I'm really noticing. But again, if you're familiar with the Rider Waite system, there's a lot of that same imagery in this. But again, this is a woodland-based deck. So first we have the Fool, our first card, and this is a little baby deer and is adorable, but we still have some of our typical imagery that you do associate with the fool. Usually there's like a pack because he started out on a journey. He's a little bit naive, you know, him on his little wobbly bambi legs, and he has like a little stick, like a walking stick kind of just go along. So this is very typical sort of fool imagery. But then you also have this like dark forest in the background, like, hey, things may be you know, harder for this character than you may think starting out. Then we have the Magician, and as you can see, the animals that are included in the Major Arcana are not the same as what we're going to get in the different suits. The different suits will stick to the same animals, the Arcana cards, Major Arcana cards, are going to be different animals that you may not see in the rest of the deck. Beautiful! I mean, look at this art. I mean, it is so stunning. I love the numbers included at the top and the text, and then also just the imagery that you're more familiar with if you're used to other tarot decks that are based on the Rider Waite. So we have all three images of the different suits here of swords, wands, pentacles, and cups. It's still symbolized here as this like crow or raven in a nest with all these things. So I just I love this imagery. Like This almost looks like a pool even though it's a nest. Oh, stunning. Then we have the High Priestess. Again, it's similar imagery that you're going to be used to from Rider Waite. We have a moon there. We have some scrolls with knowledge. We have almost like a crown going on. Just completely dig these like nighttime vibes, although other cards are brighter. I just really dig these forest vibes. If you know me at all, I really sort of identify as a forest witch. So this is the kind of imagery that I absolutely adore and I can't wait to get to know this deck. Then we have the Empress and there she is on a throne. Again, we have sort of like a is it like a scepter, I think is the word for that? She has like a little flower crown. She has all of her babies. 
And we have this feminine symbol here, which is included in a lot of Rider Waite. I really appreciate this deck and how much the similarities are there for Rider Waite, because I do have other decks that are Rider Waite based, but not as blatant. I do feel like this deck, for it being animals, has very similar imagery to Rider Waite, like blatant. So I really feel like if someone was new to tarot, they could still use this if they want to use like the Rider Waite system, because there's so much overlap there. Then here we have the Emperor. So he has more of that like sun kind of vibe going on. He has his scepter. There are some like horned god imagery, even though it's more like a ram here. But he just looks so regal, does he not? Then we have the Hierophant, this beautiful little owl. I love this so much. And again, he has some of these similar imagery. We have a key, we have a compass, we have some of these things. And owls are some of my favorite birds. I mean, honestly, I love all animals so much that I couldn't even tell you like some of my favorites, but most of my favorite woodland creatures are included in this deck. I just think even in a card like this, which initially seems so simple, like you can really sort of zoom it in and see some intricacies here, like as far as like the chains and the lock and like what what is he on? Sort of like a post. I don't know. I just feel like even for intuitive reading, this is going to be so good. Then we have one of my favorite cards because I do love foxes so, so much. The lovers. Look at those beautiful, beautiful babies. I mean, how like happy is this card? They are so beautiful. They're in a nice little meadow. Their head almost makes a heart shape. Ugh love it. Then we have the chariot, and I really do appreciate this very cute interpretation. So we have this snail on top of a bird, and you know, the chariot is obviously like an action card moving forward, this kind of stuff, and the snail is like hitching a ride on a bird, and I just, again, I love that, like the detail, like look at the grass. Oh, this art is so stunning. I mean, look at, look at the, look at the little snail and the art on his shell. Oh my gosh. And we have Strength, and this is a badger with some of his little friends. So we have him on a snake, you know, kind of protecting everyone else. I love this. This just gives me like Redwall vibes. If you ever read the Redwall books as a child or maybe as an adult, but I read them as a child. And this just gives me those kind of vibes. Like I just feel these characters like talking. Then we have the hermit, who's this little hedgehog, and he is so adorable. I love the use of fireflies in a lot of these images, and he's just on his little lonesome way, and we have a staff and everything, and he's just super cute. That nighttime forest scene, ugh, gorgeous. Then we have the Wheel of Fortune, and I dig this, like, Charlotte's Web kind of vibe going on here uh, with this web and, and the different um, points on the wheel and things. Just, again, so pretty. And again, a lot to look into in this card. A lot of little features in the art. Then we have Justice, and this is one of the first cards that I ever saw for the deck. Not the very first one, I'll show you that, because that's the one that really gripped me. But this one was used a lot in some of the um, advertising and such, so love a wolf. Who does not? <laughs> and just the the regalness of this card. Again, stunning. I mean, all these cards are stunning, but I cannot get over this art. And we have the Hanged Man, and I love this Hanged Man. I just, I dig it so much. One little field mouse, adorable, so cute. But obviously the Hanged Man, sometimes when people first see it, can just feel like a scary card. I mean, it's not. It's just a card where you're kind of hanging out. You know, it's upside down, hanged. Like, that just kind of gives people some weird vibes. This is just so sort of soothing to me. It really evokes that image of you're kind of just waiting. And it's this little mouse, you know, under the flowers, kind of keeping him dry a bit. And he's just chilling out. He's just hanging there. And I think that is so in line with the vibes of the Hanged Man. Then we have Death. I do love a good Death card. Death is not a card that really scares me. I find it fairly soothing. Um, I don't pull it a lot. Watch I say that, and then I'll start pulling it all the time in 2021. But this is beautiful. Again, I feel like this is very peaceful. Death as a card, I know, does scare some people as well, even though it really is just like a more calm ending than some other cards maybe. But this, I think, just kind of gives that vibe. Like, I really feel like these butterflies slash like night moths or whatever they're supposed to be are sort of soothing this rabbit character. The rabbit does not seem scared. Like, it's just a really beautiful image. I love the purples and the use here with the colors. I just really dig this vibe. Then we have Temperance, which is a swan here with, again, we have some cups and things going on. Temperance is not a card that I see very often um, myself, so it's one I'm less familiar with, but again, beautiful. So we have different imagery here with almost like a river, and there's a lot going on, you know, like the, the swan is kind of like protecting its little almost like nested area. So dig this. I mean, I dig all of them. I'm going to keep saying that throughout this video, though. Then we have the devil. So as many people know, the devil is sort of the juxtaposition to the lover's card as far as they get the imagery a lot of times, like in Rider Waite Smith inspired decks, the lovers that appeared usually appear on the death card as well and in the same way. So we have these foxes that we saw before, but they are tangled up in thorns and things, you know, being trapped. The devil has a lot just to do with like addiction and harmful connection and things like that. And now we have 
moths instead of butterflies. So again, it's very much a mirror of the lover's card. Then we have the tower, which is everyone's like scariest card, I feel like, in a lot of ways. But this tower, again, doesn't freak me out. I don't think it's as beautiful as some of the other cards in this deck. I will say that. I think maybe something else could have been done. However, I don't, I don't mind this. Um, you know, this like tree of life kind of look um, you know, that falling down struck by lightning, like all of that imagery is very much typical tower imagery. So I'm okay with this, but it's not a card that I think would necessarily scare me by the imagery. Like I've definitely seen scarier tower cards in my day. Then we have the star, and this is one of the only uses of fish in this deck. And it is just, again, so beautiful. Like this night sky, purpley, blue, green, just really dig the vibes. Like I almost feel like it has an iridescent look to it, even though it's not. It's just the way that the art is done, really beautiful. Then we have the moon, and who doesn't love a good moon card, right? I mean, I know the moon is actually supposed to have some kind of like uh, um, symbolism sometimes um, with like the unknown and things, but this one feels so cozy. Like this look and the, and the squirrel and the moon and the, the flowers, I mean, it is just so gorgeous. Then we have the sun, and this is again much more of a simple card, but I do like this like sunlight vibe here, and it sort of shows that, you know, the sun breaking through the storm kind of thing, which I think not a lot of cards that I've seen show that. Usually it's a very typical summer scene, and this very much shows like, okay, this is sort of the calm after the storm kind of card. Then we have Judgment, and I also dig some of the imagery in this. If you pay more attention to it, at first it's kind of like, oh, okay, that's like sort of simple, but I like that they put this like cross on here. Now, I'm not a religious person as far as like Christianity, and I have a lot of issues with it. However, this image of this like zealot almost, or like a crusader type imagery to put with judgment makes sense, you know? So I think this, I mean, this has to be intentional, this kind of like cross image going on because it feels very religious, you know, like a white bird, things like that. So I do really like the imagery because it's so easy to read intuitively. And then we have the world. And so that is the end of the major arcana cards. And I do love that there we have our, our little fool again, it looks like, you know, and then we have the the older deer giving him a little world. It is just so beautiful. Oh, love it. Love those vibes. And now we enter the minor arcana with the cups, and the cups are represented by the squirrels. So the squirrels and a lot of these little like half acorns, this, oh, this is so cute. I love the vibes of this so much. So we have the ace of cups first. So as many of you know, aces are new opportunities, uh, new things like that. So we have this whole uh, beginning sort of thing going on and sort of cup overfloweth type thing. And look at him just looking into the new little cup coming out of the water. Then we have the Two of Cups. So cute. I mean, I can't just sit here and say how cute all of these are, but look at how adorable they are. And then the Three of Cups. So we have them kind of tossing around some cups here, getting lost in some flowers. We have the Four of Cups. You know, some despair there. A sad squirrel ignoring the cups he has in the background. Then we have the Five of Cups, another kind of sad one. Little squirrel on the side of a river. I do find that there's a lot of, like, river imagery in five of cups cards that I've seen. Then we have the six of cups card, a little more plentiful here. And we have the seven of cups. Then the eight of cups, another more like contemplation type card. Again, imagery that you will probably recognize from Rider Waite. Then the nine of cups. And the ten of cups, which is a more family-based card. I didn't talk a lot about the cups in general because I don't get cups a lot, so I'm not super familiar with them as I am with other suits that you'll see me know more about in the future. I'm still learning, but I do love that a lot of times in here with these little squirrels, the hearts and stuff will show up. So this is a very like loving stability kind of card. So we have the heart showing up on their fur as well. And we have the page of cups. Again, his little heart shows up. We have the knight of cups. We have the Queen of Cups, very regal, again, she has a completed acorn and her little crown, which I really like how the crowns are drawn in this. And we have the King of Cups. Now we are on to the Pentacles, which is rabbits. So again, we're having them show up as these coins. Here's the Two of Pentacles. Here's the Three of Pentacles. So it didn't quite include like a scale, I sometimes will see scales on Three of Pentacles, but did have them hanging, which I think is a nice touch. Here's the Four of Pentacles. Then we have the Five of Pentacles, a bit of a, a bit of a sad card. The Six of Pentacles. I love how expressive the faces are in this art as well. Seven of Pentacles. Eight of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles. And Ten of Pentacles. 
again, another kind of family scene. Tens are, you know, sort of like completions of cycles and things like that. And we have the Page of Pentacles. The Knight of Pentacles, and he has more like an armor type look to him. And we have the Queen of Pentacles. And I didn't mention this earlier, but I think the animals that they chose for the different suits really make a lot of sense. So squirrels for cups, I think are interesting, an interesting choice because it is sort of like a community, you know, social connections, things like that. Pentacles are typically like physical body, wealth, um, things like that work. And I think rabbits sort of do have that like earth vibe because pentacles are an earth card and like home, you know, with their burrows and stuff, they have big families because they're rabbits. <laughs> so it very much makes sense. There we have the king. And I like that he has sort of this crown imagery more with leaves. Then we have the ace of swords. We have the sword suit with these, I don't know if they're actually crows or ravens, but either way, corvids. And the swords cards never come to play. I said that in my last walkthrough of the Tarot of the Divine, which I will link on the screen if you're interested. But yeah, swords cards are actually some of the first ones that I saw for this. So these are the ones that stuck out to me a lot. And I do love a good sword card. I don't pull them very often, but I do like them even though they're sometimes kind of scary. <laughs> So we have the two of swords here, some indecision, some blindfolds. Blindfolds pop up a lot in swords. I mean, not like a, a lot, a lot, but there's a couple different blindfolded cards here that I really like the imagery of. We have the three of swords, which I was pulling for a long time, like back to back in all my readings. So I'm really familiar with it, but I dig this. I love this leaf in a heart shape and the three swords, like just oof, so classic for the imagery here. And we have the four of swords. So sleeping right on the sword blade like that. Love it. Then we have the Five of Swords. Again, we have some of the other crows kind of around him, or ravens, corvids. And the Six of Swords. So stunning. Then we have the Seven of Swords. And the Eight of Swords. This is the first card that I saw for this deck. And I was like, I, um, I need that. I absolutely need that. And then I saw the rest of the art and I was like, I need that. So look at this. The blindfold, all the... Oh, the, the trapped in the, in the flowers. Like, I, I just... I cannot get over how beautiful this card is. Then we have the Nine of Swords. And a bit of a brutal one. The Ten of Swords. Which is brutal and beautiful at the same time. The Page of Swords. The Knight of Swords. Some more blindfold imagery, but this time with a hat. The Queen of Swords. And the King of Swords. And lastly, we have the wands with the foxes. Again, I just really appreciate the different imagery. Wands are more action kind of cards. Foxes are just that kind of animal. I didn't mention, but swords being cards of like intelligence, thoughts, things like that. Corvids, whether that's a crow or a raven, are really good symbolism of that. But anyway, let's get into the wands. So here's the ace of wands. And I love the wand imagery in this with like the sticks and like the leaves and stuff. Dig this. The two of wands. The three of wands. Another just really great card. I just really dig the imagery. The Four of Wands. Gotta love little foxes in love. I mean, again, like the heart shape, like in his fur. So cute. The Five of Wands, which is a fighting card. I just, I like, I dig this. Like, look at, look at them. Look at them doing their little jumps. The Six of Wands. The Seven of Wands. I believe this is a defensive card. You can definitely get that vibe. The Eight of Wands. The Nine of Wands, a little, a little sad, he's a little beat up, but it looks a little hopeful like he's gonna be okay. The Ten of Wands, so cute. I have so many reasons for getting this deck, but I also really appreciate that there's a whole suit of foxes. I love foxes so much. The Page of Wands. The Knight of Wands, look at his little hat. The Queen of Wands, Ugh, so regal. Oh my god, look at her. And the King of Wands. Now, they also included some additional cards in this deck that are just like some additional art and stuff, and I actually sort of want to get prints of some of these. So here's just this really cute mouse card. And then we have this card, which they call the Possibilities card, and this has a dragon with all of the creatures from these suits, right? And the reason this is kind of cool, and I'm showing you this at the end, is because the creator, Stephanie, has announced that the second deck that the Three Trees Tarot is going to create as a company is a woodland dragon deck. I am probably going to buy it, but I'm not as much of a dragon fan as some people are. So I wanted to let you guys know, because I know some people love a dragon, and I like them, but like, you know, I think this deck will serve for that like woodland vibe for me. Who knows? We'll see. They just announced about a month ago, maybe less. So we'll see as the creation starts for that, but definitely follow them on Instagram to see more of that. 
and I cannot wait to see what they come up with because, again, the art in this is stunning. I absolutely love it. And that is it for the Oak, Ash, and Thorn Tarot. Comment down below let me know what cards really stuck out to you if you're thinking about getting this deck or, or if you're going to keep an eye on the Woodland Dragon deck coming out. And definitely let me know if there's any other kind of Woodland-based tarot decks that you would really recommend to me. I have my eye on some of the Crow decks as well as the Darkwood Tarot and some of the, like, Druid decks, but this is the most perfect vibe for me with the animals and everything, so really dig this. And I'm trying to keep my tarot collection fairly small. I have three decks now and a couple oracles, so I'm looking more into oracle decks especially. So if there are some woodland nature themed oracle decks that you think I'd really enjoy as well, let me know. So thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye!